Hello, class. Good morning. I'm sorry I was on mute. Hello. How are you? I'm okay. Thank you. How was your week? Good teacher. Hey, hello. How was your weekend today? It was good. very good. What What did you do? Well, Susanna, do you work on the weekends? No, I don't. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yes, actually it is. For me, the perfect, the perfect days off are Sunday and Monday. Really? Yes. Why? Well, because well, one thing is because I'm married. And um the thing is when you're married and you have a weekend off. That's not your time. <laughs> you know, you have to do many things like do this, do that, do that. But like if you rest Sunday, okay, good. You spend time with your family and you have to do things. But Monday, my wife works, my son studies. So I'm actually alone in the house. Hmm. That's my so relaxed time. Either. Yes, that's my time. But unfortunately, my days off are Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> but if, if I had the option to choose, I would love Sunday and Monday because of that. Because it's cool. I mean, everybody works and, and works or study on Monday. So yeah, you know, I used to like Tuesday and Wednesday. Oh, that was awesome. Oh, that's true too. All right. Nidia, you are home today. You're not in the in the um you're not in the pharmacy. I think you're in mute or we can't hear you. Can you hear Nidia class? Nope. Okay. We can't hear you, Nidia. Okay, no worries, no worries, no worries. Let me see. Hi, Irma Raquel. Hi, Tisha. Hello, Laura. Hi, good evening. Hello. How are you? All right, and we have Hi. Cecilia. Then we have Tanya, Pamela. And we have Edgar. Edgar, what's up? How are you? How's your business? Everything okay, teacher. What about you? I'm good. What is the name of your, of your store, Edgar? It's uh, Tigo Money. No, but that, that is the name of your store, Digo Money. No, no, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, Tienda Ignacio. Tienda Ignacio. Um, can you explain to me how Digo Money works? <clears throat> okay. Okay, Tigo for Money. example, for example, I want to send, I am in San Salvador and my brother is in San Miguel. Okay, if you want to send money to your brother, Mm -hmm. You have to register yourself in Tigo. Okay. You have to, you have to have an account, and then and and that that your, is an application. Yeah, you can download the the app, and then you can you can go to the store and ask for a charge. And and then oh, we have so that. I have to go to a store. Yeah. I can't do it for for my application from a credit card or something. If it, yeah, I think it can work that way. Okay. Mm -hmm. But many yeah. people yeah. used to go to the to the store and ask for uh for add money to the account and then you can send that money to your brother. So if I send $20 to my brother, mm -hmm. how much do I pay for a commission? Uh, you don't pay for commissions. Uh, probably your brother has to pay when okay. they withdraw the money. How much would he pay? Uh, it's 5%. 
Five percent. Okay. Yeah. Probably like two dollars something. Two fifty. No, like like one one dollar. No, wait, wait. Twenty. Ten percent of twenty is two dollars. Oh yeah, one dollar. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, it's it's not bad. Yeah. Sometimes it's very necessary when people like are are running out of money. They need they use that way to send money to another person. And now where where can I pick up that money in authorized stores? And you can pick up that money on Actigo money. Like for example, so, in your store. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can pick up in my store. Oh, okay. You can uh, you can get uh, remesas familiares like MoneyGram and Western Union as well. Hey, that's cool. Yeah, you can pay bills like electric electricity or internet. You can ask for uh, for paying like fa fa uh, invoices. Oh, okay. Yeah, different kind of invoices. And also you can pay the colegiaturas as well. It's cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea for Tigo money. Yeah. It's, it, uh, we have to make too many transactions per day to get like commissions. Oh, so you have to you you have like um metrics that you have to make certain transactions to make commissions. Yeah, to uh, yeah several to make up uh, more commissions. Okay, so do you think is it is it a good business or not to have Digo money? Uh, this it could be a good business when I I think. Well, maybe it depends our... where you live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it depends. Okay, interesting. Yeah. And, and you don't spend like electricity, you, you don't spend uh, money to to buy something, just add the charge or add money to the account and you can start to working. Okay, cool. So, Okay, class, do you see the lady? Yes, teacher. Yes. All right, let's do the electronics. The vocabulary today is electronics. Let's see what this is. Ready to describe a problem with an electric item you own? Follow my example. My computer keeps freezing. Type your examples on our discussion box. Wait, I'm going to start over. Hello, we want you to work on the following sentences. You may complete them by using the correct form of keep and the words in the box. This time, you will do this exercise on your notebook and ask your teacher to check them for you. My computer is driving me crazy. It. The buttons on the remote control always stick. They. The UCD player often jumps to another song. It. Our new flat screen TV has a problem. It. Those old cell phones never work right anymore. They. Sometimes Ed can't use his solar powered calculator. It. My computer screen needs to be replaced. It. The answering machine never picks up any calls. It. Ready to describe a problem with an electric item you own? Follow my example. My computer keeps freezing. Type your examples on our discussion box.
You understand that that example freezing? What does that mean? When you say your computer keeps freezing. Yeah, but in Spanish we don't say we don't say that, do we? Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. It says freeze. We yes. say se me congeló la pantalla. I said se me frició. <laughs> se me qué? Se me frició. Oh, really? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, I never thought about that. Do we say that in Spanish? Yo atascar. Uh, yeah. But in English, it's a very common. It's very common to say that. Man, I closed my portal. Hold on. Okay, so it says here, listen to three people talk about their jobs. Short answers only. Don't worry about capital letters or periods. Listen to three people talk about their job. Complete the chart. One, Joe. I work in the watch repair center at a large department store. I repair all kinds of watches, but nowadays, most of them are pretty easy to fix because they all run on batteries. The most common problem is they need a new battery. Since that only takes a minute or so to fix, I always have plenty of time to tell my watch jokes, like this one. What time is it when an elephant sits on your watch? Time to buy a new watch. And here's another one. What time is it when the big hand is on the... Two, Louise. I repair luggage, mostly suitcases. I have a little shop at the airport. People spend a lot of money on luggage, and often all it takes is one flight for a suitcase to get damaged. The most typical problem, I guess, is the wheels. I fix the wheels on about 20 suitcases a week. It's not surprising, really, with the way those baggage handlers throw people's luggage around. You'd think they were playing ball the way they toss the suitcases. 3. Sam I repair household appliances. The most frequent calls I get are from people who are having trouble with the garbage disposal system in their kitchen sink. Usually, the thing gets jammed because people put too much food into it at one time, or something metal or plastic has fallen down into it. It's usually pretty easy to fix a garbage disposal, but every once in a while, you run into situations that aren't exactly typical. One time, a little girl put her doll down into the disposal. She thought the doll would enjoy the ride. She couldn't get it back out again, and she was afraid to tell her mother. So when the mother went to use the disposal, it made a horrible noise and then died. And so did the doll. Okay, so what does... Regarding Joe, what does this person repair? What? He repairs the he repairs watches. What is the typical problem? The battery. People run out of battery. Luis, what does this person repair? Uh, What is the typical problem? The wheel. The wheel. What? The wheels. The wheels. The wheels. Yeah. The wheels. Okay, well, Sam, what does this person repair? 
Uh, household appliances. His uh, household appliances. Do you understand that that term household? Mm. Not really. Okay. Um. What is the meaning, teacher? De hogar. Mm. Nunca han visto que a veces dice venta de artículos de hogar. Mm -hmm. That is households household appliance. For example, a coffee maker is a household appliance, correct? Oh. So you say, what is a coffee maker? Oh, it's a household appliance. Ahora, a tractor is not a household appliance. A microwave is a household appliance. Yes. Things that normally everybody has in their home is a household appliance. Okay. A microwave, <clears throat> TV, washer. Refrigerator. In fact, when you go when you go to a store, let's say like Siman, mm -hmm. there's the section home appliance. Mm -hmm. So those are things only for home. So obviously, ahí no van a encontrar vodka. Or well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, in home appliance, what is something you will never find in home appliance? Let's say a hammer. Yeah, a hammer you will not find in a home appliance, correct? Exactly. A what, I'm sorry? Okay. One time I stole, Robe, um, a toaster mm -hmm. and uh, a radio, like a CD player, a nice CD player from Walmart, but it was an accident. What do you mean an accident? Mm -hmm. Because, okay, when I started working, I was very, I was a very uh, stupid kid. So my mother, she, my mother said, you have to pay me rent. And I said, why? No, pay me rent. Now you work, pay me rent. I said, no. So my mother obligated me to pay her rent. And forever, I was angry with my mother. So many, many years later, I had to, when I got my first apartment, of course, I did not have one dollar ahorrado, saved. So my mother told me, remember when I told you to pay me rent and you never paid me? I mean, you paid me very angry. Yes, I remember, mom. Here, she returned the money to me. And all the money. The big surprise. She the money for you. It was a lesson she was teaching me. She said, if I never charge you this money, you will never appreciate, you never save. It was a very big lesson. I plan to do that with my son because when she gave me that money, I was, oh my God. She told me, you're going to go to an apartment and you have nothing. Nothing. So go buy things. So I go to Walmart. And I go crazy in Walmart. Because Walmart sells whole home appliances, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. So I start getting many things like 
of course, the first thing at TV, <laughs> at TV, at toaster, I'm a microwave. I started getting many things, exaggerating. So I filled two, two cards. And I had so many things that the toaster and the microwave and the toaster and the radio, it was a very nice radio, was in the bottom. But I was passing everything. I mean, it was a very long list. I spent maybe $700. And this was 20 years ago. Ooh. And I had I have like three thousand dollars, so I said no. The rest tomorrow, but not tomorrow. Voy a ir a, a, to buy sofas there, and that. but when I get home, I said, "Wow, I bought many things. Why only seven hundred dollars?" And when I look, they never charge me for them for the. No, it was the microwave. They never charged me for the microwave or the CD player, the radio. And that was like a hundred and twenty dollars. <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> but really, really, technically, it was not my fault because because when I was passing everything, I was imagine I had two cards, so I was boom, 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 boom. and and the, the you know somebody from there was helping me package things. So two two people helped me take all the things to my car. Ain't nobody realized. <laughs> no, I really I assumed they passed it. So when I get home, I realized that I didn't. And I was very scared to go back to that Walmart because 20 <laughs> years ago, yeah, ponía la cara de uno. <laughs> you will be like, <laughs> yeah, I was like. No, but you know, I, I realized that maybe two or three days later, not that day. Because when I was I was doing like, oh, those three thousand dollars my mother gave me in two days, gone. So you know. I was very my mother was like, Oh my god, por gusto, pero that va a, pre, <laughs> va a aprender de la forma difícil, which I did. But anyways. <laughs> But I was making counsel more because and that's when I realized, oh my God. So I didn't go to that Walmart for many years. You take it as, as a discount. <laughs> yeah. And one day I went to that Walmart, but I was very scared. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> the reason why, because a long, long time ago I used to teach the Siman people. And the security of Siman, the, the head of security, he told me that Siman has has very, very good secure as a very good security system. For example, they have face recognition. So for example, if they ever catch in Siman stealing Rwanda or something, um Maybe you know you don't go to the police, okay, whatever, but they 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 so if you go there again some other day, the system recognizes your face and they start following you. So I remembered I remembered he what what my Siman student said. So when I went to Walmart, oh, oh my god, what if they recognize me? <laughs> but no, nothing ever happened. Yeah. Now, now those CD players don't even exist anymore. Hmm. Okay, let's do a reading exercise. Trading spaces. Do you understand what the what the word Trading means? No, teacher. Can you uh, give the answer, please? Sure. Have you ever sold something on Marketplace? 
Yes, I I have done. Okay, so imagine you're selling a TV or a cell phone. Let's say you're selling a cell phone and you say, I want $100. And people start writing, writing to you. Do you trade? Do you trade? Do you trade? Do you trade? Um, what it's like an uh, exchange. Yes, an exchange. exchange. And you say, no, only sell. <laughs> That's why some people, some people marketplace putting solo vendo, no cambio, repito, no cambio. <laughs> like, I, hey, amigo, cambio. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. So that is a trade. All right, cool. Okay. Do you remember, do you remember CAFTA? What? Gafta and nafta. Do you remember? Uh, no, no, no. It was very famous. For example, Gafta is the Central American Free Trade Agreement. Mm, yes. Con Estados Unidos. Era para economizar. Gafta uh, law. Yeah, the CAFTA and the NAFTA was North American free trade. Que creo que podían libre de impuestos. Los cambios. Yes, I remember. But I couldn't, I couldn't study so much. Yeah, but I, was, I, I don't know. It's if, boring for me. <laughs> I don't know if that still exists. The, the, Oh, uh, Irma, you work in La Uca, correct? Yeah. <laughs> Libreria, if yeah. you want to go. <laughs> no, but that, that bookstore of La Uca, where you work, it belongs to La Uca Uca. And to a foundation, uh, Fonda Gondra, uh, and works together with Uca. Okay. The store is in... Cascadas Yeah, I, uh, I've seen it. It's it's in front of the waterfall, correct? Yeah. If you if you go someday, you will you will see. I will if I if That's I go me. someday, I will stop by and say hi. Ah, hi. <laughs> I go there frequently because my my son likes that that slide, Dogan. Oh, okay. <laughs> when do you go? No, but I usually call like on Saturdays. Oh, I will work on Saturday. Okay. I'm going to work. Okay. But you know, my question is, is, is La Uca the same Uca in Nicaragua too? Mm, I think that, yeah. Uh, I think, but I, the, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. The one that has problems in this moment. Mm, why? I think I think I think the president closed the university. I I don't yes. watch the news. Yeah, he, news. I don't watch the news. Yeah, I Ortega or, uh, Daniel Ortega closed La Uca. That man is closing everything. He closes the newspapers, the TVs, channels, anybody who speaks bad about him. Oh. <laughs> but I was surprised La Uca. <laughs> I think that is the same, but in El Salvador is open. No, but you know what's funny? The people mm -hmm. that, like, for example, the FMLN people, mm -hmm. they call Bukele a dictator. <laughs> dictator, dictator. Oh. <laughs> and, and I said, like, really, man? <laughs> mm -mm. This part. It, it, it's, not, it's not to defend Bukele, no, but... Oh. Really, they don't have a concept of what a dictator is. No. <laughs> People sometimes speak only because they yes. have a mouth. <laughs> it's funny listening to Lorena Peña say, El dictador. Like, oh my God. <laughs> no, you know, or, or the Adito Ruiz that says, The dictator. Oh. And he has Cuba in his hat, Cuba, Venezuela. And... <laughs> yeah. It's funny. But here, no. Yeah. We don't have. No, we don't. Yeah, many people tell me, hey, is it true that your president is a dictator? He's no. not a 
dictator, man. <laughs> okay, so it's listen. It's a guy. It's a person and guy. <laughs> he's he's fighting. <laughs> okay, listen. <laughs> trading spaces. So now we're going to trade spaces. So listen. How I'm going to read. Listen to what it says. How fast can a home remodeling project be completed? About 48 hours. At least that's what the basis of the popular reality TV show called Trading Spaces. Two sets of neighbors switch homes for two days and re decorate redecorate a single room in their neighbor's home both teams have the help of a designer a handyman and a budget of one thousand dollars at the end of the second day the host reveals the room to the homeowners who usually say wow that's great sometimes however they get upset is this reality real is this reality tv realistic up to a point the designers actually get videotapes of the rooms and plan out every step beforehand even the materials are purchased in advance it's the same at home one designer said if you don't want a project to last for months you need to you need a game plan Everybody thinks trading spaces is totally real, but trading spaces is totally not real. Said a woman who appeared on the show. If we didn't do something on camera right, we had to do it again. You become an actor. So how happy are homeowners after their remodeling? Generally, the participants are thrilled. But one couple in Portland, Oregon, hated their new room. Their comfortable but cramped family room was transformed into a dark movie theater. But you didn't see that on the show. You didn't see me crying, said Shannon Pitts. They edited out of the show. It was a non-functional room, said Scott Pitts. As you could do all you could do is watch TV. So they found themselves remodeling their own space again. But even though Shannon and Scott didn't like the way their family room turned out, they still be on the show again. Why? They love redecorating re their neighbor's place. So, so what do you think? What, what is this show Trading Places? Sorry, what was the question? What is the show Trading Places? What what happens in the show? Uh they are remote uh remodeling. Uh I think that's the word. They remodel. All right. They remodel uh so, uh rooms. But who remodels? Uh the um the neighbors. <laughs> yeah, another family. <laughs> Yes. So, yeah. so the idea of the show, imagine Susan, you and your husband or you and your family will go to Irma's home mm -hmm. and you have $1,000 to remodel a room in her home in 48 hours. <laughs> I will not do it. <laughs> it's not true. Yeah, it's kind of difficult. Yeah. Imagine what happened here, like why this person was angry. If you look at the picture in the left, you see the room is white. That is a living room. That's nice. I mean, it looks old school, but it's nice. And then what the people did, they made it a home theater. <laughs> but they um, smile. Oh, so it's a, it's a, a smile, false. 
Yeah, pero that's the woman, Shannon. Scott, porque creo que le tiene que hacer caso a Shannon. I would be crying if I go, oh my God, you put a movie theater in my living room. What else do you I mean, want? It's a good idea, but not for a small house. Oh, I you don't... need a lot of rooms to do I, that. <laughs> I would love that person forever. Oh my God, I have a theater in my house. <laughs> Can you imagine watching Movie a soccer game? <laughs> soccer, sports, yes. Bleepy for my son. <laughs> I would be, <laughs> oh my God, that's it. I don't need anything else in life. You can sleep there. <laughs> I would live there. <laughs> I would actually live there. Do you have any questions regarding the... um? um any questions on, on the vocabulary? Uh, yeah, purchase. I don't have an idea what is that. Buy. Buy. Buy, yes. For example, um, imagine in your office, Susana, mm -hmm. Your job, they buy 100 chairs mm -hmm. for the uh, agents. Right. But then they realize that every chair has a defect. All right. So then you ask, where were these chairs purchased? Adquiridas. Oh. All right, thank you. All right. Have you ever fell off a chair in a call center? No, thank God, no. No, oh, I have. Really? That was embarrassing. <laughs> Do you have a video of that? Um, No, but I think my trainer must have the video. <laughs> because we were in training, so it was for the COVID time. Really? So if you work in a call center during the COVID, aprendimos trucos, you know, how to sleep and be on TV. Like, for example, look at me right now. All right. You can't see if my eyes are open or closed. I do. Well, it depends on. The, well, this camera I have is not very good, but I, I had I had like glasses, like, or I do this. It's up here. <laughs> yeah, you know. So I don't know how I started sleeping, and I went back, and pa -pa. no, <laughs> and it was funny because the trainer said, "What was that noise?" Juan, what was that noise? I don't know. <laughs> Maria, what was that noise? I don't know. David, what was that noise? What noise? The noise that you <laughs> made right now when you fell. It was on camera. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> that was embarrassing. Oh, one of um, our co-workers. <laughs> Pobrecita, man, because, but really, that was too extreme. Um, she ha she was wearing pajamas, but you know it's okay. I mean, it was training, and but um, I don't know why she decided to change, or maybe she said, hey, "Me voy a cambiar," so she changed her shirt, her pajama shirt. To mm -hmm. put on a normal shirt. And you know, look more presentable. The only problem is that when she took off her shirt, she was not wearing anything under. Oh my God. Is she forgot about the camera? Yes. Totally. Oh my God. <laughs> like 28 people saw her and she, you know, she took off her clothes. You know, it's be it, because you know. It was boring. Those trainings were so long and boring that you you totally forget the camera sometimes. 
pobrecita, man. And, you know, and everybody was chatting and they're like, hey, hey. What <laughs> embarrassing. Yeah, wow. pobrecita, man. She quit. Yeah, I see you. Yeah, you know, and uh, I spoke with her yes, uh, yesterday. You know, I spoke with her days later. Come on, don't quit because of that. But, I mean, I do understand. Mm. It was something very embarrassing. You know. Le dije, el lado bueno, nadie lo va a subir. Pobrecita. But it's embarrassing. Definitely. Yeah. So back back to that. You you understand now what purchased is, right? Yes. Yes. Like where you get it, right? Yes. All right. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's another it's another word for buy. So number one, it says here, the participants of the show get assistance from experts. Yes or no? It's true. Uh, it's true. Yes. It's true. Remember, they have yes. a, a interior design. The, hand the, hand the projects sometimes take months to complete. No. False. false. It's false, or it was actually not given. It's false. The number two false. is false. Okay. Yeah. Many participants redecorate their homes after the show. True. True. Not given. Not given. Not given. Not given. Yes, it was not given. There was one example, but about one family, but here it says many participants. Okay, the people who appear on the show are actors. False. False. Oh. False. Reality shows aren't always entirely honest. True. True. The pits are no longer friends with their neighbors. Not given. Given. Not given. Yeah. I don't. I, I got I, a question. Sorry. Yes. yes. Uh, with the answers, not giving is like they don't say that. Or it was not mentioned. Like yes. Oh, that information okay. was not mentioned. All right, cool, thank you. So, for example, imagine it says, the participants get the money from the bank. Mm -hmm. That that information was not given. It was said that, yes, they get $1,000 to, mm -hmm. rede to redecorate. But where they get the money from is that uh, that uh, information is not given. All right, cool. Okay, now let's go to section two intro video for section two. Hi, welcome. Can you, did, did you hear? Yes. Yes, teacher. Yes, okay. Sir. Welcome again. We recommend for you to watch the following video and pay attention to it because you will listen to all the topics we'll study in this section. Remember, you may watch the video as many times as you need to. Sit back and relax. One of the most remote nations on earth threatened by rising water levels has today experienced the damaging impact of what's known as a king tide. Tuvalu is a small group of islands 10,000 miles and 11 time zones away in the South Pacific. Islanders fear that the area could disappear within 50 years if action isn't taken over climate change. Well, our environment correspondent, David Shukman, has travelled to the islands and we can join David there now. Hugh, thank you. It's a stormy time here in the heat of the South Pacific. Just the combination of high tides and strong winds that people dread. Because Tuvalu is so low in the water, it really does run the risk of becoming the first country to fall victim to the way our climate is now changing. Incredibly beautiful, but incredibly vulnerable. The fragile strips of green that make up this country only just break the surface of the ocean.
But for how much longer? The mighty waves of the Pacific pound the shoreline during what's called a king tide, the highest tides of the year, and the effects can be devastating. This is the island's main road. I mean, we've never seen this in the past, uh, water coming all the way up to this far. And our house is just up behind us. But the water also surges up from underground through the coral the islands are built on. In the space of an hour, the lowest areas are all flooded. Everyone feels the impact. This priest steps carefully through the waters on his way to conduct a funeral. The higher the king tides get, the harder it is to keep things going here. So can you grow anything here? No. Because it's too salty? Yeah, too salty. OK. The seawater is poisoning the soil and people are nervous. It makes me feel scary. So what will happen to us in 10 years' time? This isn't like other floods that I've covered with a single catastrophic event. Instead, it's a creeping process with this seawater flowing up into the heart of these islands and slowly, but effectively, killing them off. The water bubbles up in tiny streams and everywhere you look, it just lies on the surface. And the problem is getting worse. At the harbour, the rising swell is monitored by an Australian system. The measurements go back 15 years. And at the local Met office, they say the king tides are getting higher, a trend forecast to continue. In prediction, the next five to ten years, the king tide getting worse and getting higher than normal, then most of the coastal areas would be washed out. The implications are alarming. A typical high tide reaches about two and a half metres. A king tide like now can be more than three. The UN Climate Panel forecasts a rise of another half metre, when the highest point is only about four and a half metres. Now, for Tuvalu, each scenario would cost precious land. Only a small rise would see parts of the island go under, perhaps even the runway, a lifeline to the outside world. How long have you got? Not more than 50 years. In fact, some of the islands have already disappeared. Please help us. You cause climate change. You know, the polluter pays principle must apply. You must give, set up a global fund to which these islands can come and tap into to build their resilience, to build their capacity, their education, technology, and all that, and restore what the damage has been done. People here say there must be a technological fix if a rich country like Dubai can build entirely new islands, especially since these are so narrow, you can cross from one side to the other in a few short paces. The problem, they're founded on coral, which is porous. Saving these islands will cost a fortune. For the children of Tuvalu, the floods are fun. But for them to lead their lives on these islands will require massive international support. And with just 11,000 people here, will the outside world think it's worth it? Now, of course, Tuvalu does get some aid, but not nearly enough to keep the rising sea at bay. So the international community faces very soon a difficult choice of whether to draw a line between those who get saved and those who don't. And in the meantime, people here are getting ready for another king tide. It's right now it's low. It's due to get very high in about eight hours' time. Back to you in the studio. David, thank you very much. David Chukman there, our environment correspondent uh, in Tuvalu. I'm sorry, I was speaking on, on mute. That happened in Katrina, remember? That was the, Katrina. The big hurricane that happened in, in the United States, like Katrina? Yeah, yeah. But I I didn't listen the in the video the name only, but but I I could see that the tide was very well, okay. I,
Okay. Listen, here it says, by the end of this class, you will be able to describe causes with by, because of, due to, through, and as a result of. What are all these things have in common? They are all the same. <laughs> they have the same significance. Really? So let me give you an example. Hay una causa, right? Mm -hmm. Why do people in El Salvador hide their cell phones in the bus? Because or you because of the thief? Because of the thieves. Yeah. Why can't you use a number if you like sports why can't you use a shirt with a number 13 or 18 because well now you can <laughs> oh. because of the gang because of the gangs yes um, as a result no no um as a result you you're giving the you're giving the result of the story, but like for example, oh, okay. because of the gangs in El Salvador, you can't use a shirt that has 13 or 18. Due to the maras in El Salvador, oh, yeah. you can't use, or due to pandillas in El Salvador, you can't use shirts with 13 or 18. In El Salvador, there are two big gangs, and they go by MS, which is number 13, our um, MS is number 13, and la 18 is the number, just 18? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this, so it's about those two big gangs. It's the MS, which is number 13, and then there's the other one, which is 18. So as a result of this rivality, you cannot use those numbers, or they will kill you. Yes, uh, sometimes uh, women, women, and they can't to color their hair with red, for example, because red color in hair is was not possible because for the matter. <laughs> really, was that true that certain women painted? If the certain women painted their hair in a different color yeah or the yeah. shoes the shoes uh the kind of the type of shoes oh okay mm -hmm. so so this is what this is about is it's about um is the cause describing causes for example the damage in, in the environment Exactly. Yeah, it, it can be something very simple or it can be something very serious, but there is a cause. Do you know why, Susana, do you know why you cannot use flip-flops in call centers? Because it's not for security reasons. If there's a fire or earthquake, you it, it can be difficult for you to run in flip-flops. Yeah. So because of that, you have to use normal shoes. Do you know who Rosa? Yes. Heard. What what is this flop? Flip flops. Yes, I don't know what that is. And when Saboreño Ginas. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, flip flops son las que se meten y le agarran sus dos dedos, el dedo gordo y el otro. 
that hurts. <laughs> yeah, it says on that sandal as well, flip flip flops. Yeah. But I mean, who goes to work wearing flip flops? When it's beach day or something? Ah, oh, come on. I remember when I worked in Dell, I um sometimes people went in pajamas. Because I mean was... I work pajamas sometimes with a graveyard, but I mean it's graveyard. <laughs> no, but I, I remember I had friends, girls, that they um it was so cold in there that they went like in pajamas with their blanket and a big pillow. He said, Tirana, it's oh. just to receive calls. But there was no problem. I take a, a blanket to my work. It's cold in there. Um, you know, um, here's a story but uh, La Causa de Algo. When mm -hmm. I, I used to work in, in Dell when it was Dell, Dell, and that was in front of uh, Salvador del Mundo. Now it's Concentrix, mm -hmm. I think. I think now it's Concentrix, but before the first call center in El Salvador was Dell. All right. And it was the best experience. I they know. were they were very, very cool. And the building next to it, I used to have a, not the embassy, but it was it was the office of the of the Prime Minister of um Israel. Mm -hmm next to Dell. So one time it was Halloween and Dell said, okay, everybody, que venga vestido, get a prize. So, okay, cool. Everybody went dressed crazy. But there was one stupid idiot. He decided to go as a Taliban <laughs> with, um, <laughs> yes, with dynamite around him. No way. Yes, this is true. So the idiot decides, you know, he goes dressed as a Taliban with dynamite and he goes in the building and the security, I was like, ahí está, el ministro de Israel, man. The security <laughs> jumped on him. They almost killed him. And, you know, they, he said, no, no, I work in Dell. So, and, you know, Dell, they had to go and speak with them and say, look, maybe we take fault in this because you know, I didn't concurs of um of uh you know whoever dressed up, but you know, so because of that <laughs> we didn't know that we have a dumbass. <laughs> yes, uh, because of, of that or due to that event, the next year there were rules. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so oh my God. you know, you know, say, but okay. I imagine he wins, he won. No, I, I don't <laughs> you know. because was the, the most credible uh customer. <laughs> you know, that's no, true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. But you know, yeah, he was he was yeah, what was he thinking, man? Aunque no hubiera estado ahí lo Israel, but to dress as a Taliban with dynamite and go to a building. And you know this was in two thousand and four, and remember the 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 um attacks in the it was in two thousand and one. The nine eleven was too early to take a fan of it. <laughs> yes, so also, also, I only, it was like it was too. Uh -huh. <laughs> so because of that, the rules changed. <laughs> because of that. Yes, it was mm -hmm. very. Nice. But that that's a cool story, you know. <laughs> okay, class. So we'll continue a little bit more about this tomorrow, and then I want everybody to tell me tomorrow's story. You know, like like I told you about a story in my ex job. You tell me a story about your family, about your school, about your university, something that changed that caused a change and why okay so that's what we'll practice tomorrow all right okay. sure okay
Thank you very much. Right. Have, okay, teacher. Have a right. very good night. Bye bye. Good night. 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 Good night.